It's going to actually make us all more competitive. The president is very, very serious on making sure that the United States economy is going to be strong. We are going to be cutting taxes massively for both the middle class and for companies. We're trying to get it down to anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, and it's now 35 percent. We think we can cut regulations by 75 percent, maybe more, but by 75 percent. We're going to have plenty of trade, but TPP wasn't the right way. So we're going back to those countries one-on-one. -on -one. That uh, address on Friday was a great middle-class address. I mean, it, it, it hit home. Uh, for the people that have been hurt. That was a great moment for Thank working men and women. Well, just uh, some sound from the meetings at the White House today. President Trump meeting with business leaders, signing some executive orders, and also meeting with union leaders of the seven unions representative, represented in that meeting today. All seven of them endorsed Hillary Clinton in the election this past uh, cycle. The executive action so far, he halted reduction of uh, to annual mortgage insurance premium borrowers uh, pay when taking out government-backed home loans, ordered agencies to freeze new regulations, giving the new administration time to review them, imposed a hiring freeze for some federal government workers as a way to shrink the size of government, excluding the military, as uh, the president noted at the signing, issued a directive to federal agencies to ease regulatory burdens of Obamacare that lays the way or lays the pathway for repeal and replace, signed a notice that the U.S. will be Again, withdrawing from the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, reinstated the so-called Mexico City policy, a ban on federal funds to international groups that perform abortions or lobby to legalize or promote abortion. That was his definition of day one. Let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, Editor-in-Chief of the Weekly Standard. Mara Lyason, National Political Correspondent of National Public Radio. Editor-in-Chief of Life Zet, Laura Ingram. And syndicated columnist, Charles Krethammer. Laura thoughts on day one in his book? Uh, he got a lot done today. Uh, the, most of these issues are things he campaigned on. Uh, the, that moment with the union leaders, all of whom supported Hillary Clinton, was really well produced. Uh, there was some concern over some of the rocky uh, stuff that happened over the weekend, but it was like they planned this thing out from the executive order signing to, to that moment with the union leaders. I think that those kinds of images and those comments, maybe 10 seconds or 15 seconds, uh, from that union chief. Those are wonderful moments for him. It, he's going to have to follow through with a lot more. But for day one, the conservatives thinking he was just, this was all just talk and there wasn't going to be any action. I think so far, uh, today was a home run for him. For all the angst about the uh, an analysis, Mara, about the inaugural speech, to hear that union leader, who again endorsed Hillary Clinton, talk about it from a middle class point of view, that was kind of interesting. And you know what was interesting about it? I was at the White House today. President Trump called the press pool back in to hear that guy say that. They'd already left. And then he called them back in to make sure they heard somebody, not just from him, because his comments to the pool were more about we're going to have jobs, we're going to build factories, everything's going to be great, no more trade deals. But then they, he was, the press was called back in so they could hear that guy. Today was a very on-message day after a rocky weekend. Everything reinforced Trump's nationalist populist message from getting out of TPP. He had something for social conservatives with Mexico City. He had something for fiscal conservatives with hiring freeze. And then he had this unusual for a Republican meeting with the labor groups, which were, and some of them were local union leaders, not just national unions. And when he met with those CEOs, and you played a clip earlier, he did tell them he'd slash taxes and regulations, but he also told them that if you move your factories to Mexico and you want to import goods back, we're going to slap a 35 big yeah. import tariff on so you. So carrots and sticks. He yeah. also talked yeah. to, was asked in that union meeting about NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, whether it will be renegotiated. He said at the appropriate time, uh, saying that that was going to happen. Steve, he also called the press pool back in late today. Uh, in a meeting, a bipartisan meeting with congressional leaders. We just have a little clip of that. It's very good, and we have a fantastic relationship with everybody at the table. It's a totally just a beautiful, beautiful relationship. <laughs> a beautiful, beautiful relationship. <laughs> I mean, he's got Chuck Schumer there and Nancy right? Pelosi there. Of course, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful But he is making a bipartisan outreach on day number one. 
Yeah, it, look, it's good. I think this was a very good day. I mean, you, for, you spend 18 months campaigning for the White House to do stuff on day one. This is day one, and he's gotten a lot accomplished through executive action, the kinds of things that Laurel was talking about, the kinds of things that, that you listed. Um, you know, some of it, I think, will be music to the ears of free market conservatives. You look at the federal hiring freeze. Uh, that's great. People are going are gonna to love that. His talk about tax cuts this morning, about eliminating regulations, freezing new regulations, eliminating the ones that exist. That's the kind of thing that are going to make conservatives happy. After the inaugural speech, where I think some conservatives were concerned that there wasn't a case for limit, relimiting government, um, this some of that was, was good. I think, you know, for those of us who believe in free trade, you're concerned about some of the other comments that he made um, about the tariffs, uh, about revisiting NAFTA, what have you. A lot of those details still need to be, to be worked out, but this was a very good day, I thought, for the Trump administration. Um, I don't think that the relationship with Chuck Schumer is very good right now. This was a very rocky weekend uh, for the relationship between Republicans and Chuck Schumer. Well, to that point, they're on confirmations. They were supposed to have uh, a move on the CIA uh, director, Pompeo, the nominee, uh, and he had pledged to vote. And then there was this dust up on the floor that you reported on uh, between Senator Tom Cotton and, uh, and Chuck Schumer, also uh, Senator Burr and Senator Cornyn. And there you see they, they get in each other's face. They kind of point at each other. Apparently, there were some different words used, <laughs> words that have been used on that floor before, but um, in exchange uh, that you said was pretty heated. Alternative words. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, th I think there, there may well have been some, some F-bombs dropped. Um, this was a, a, a testy exchange because Republicans will tell you that Chuck Schumer made a promise that if Republicans would agree to move the confirmation hearing for Mike Pompeo to be CIA director back one day, Chuck Schumer would agree to include Mike Pompeo in the group that was passed, group of national security officials that was passed through the Senate by voice vote on Inauguration Day. That didn't happen. Republicans have said that Chuck Schumer went back on his pledge when he was asked for an explanation, according to several sources that I talked to. Schumer said to the Republicans, well, I was speaking in my personal capacity. I wasn't speaking as, as leader the leader of the, of the Democrats. And, and uh, Richard Burr, Senate Intelligence Committee chairman, who's not known for being particularly aggressive or fiery, said today to uh, one of our reporters on Capitol Hill, he lied. Charles, it does, though, seem that uh, Pompeo will get through. Tillerson after Rubio and uh, Lindsey Graham and John McCain as Secretary of State will also get through. He just passed a committee this, this evening. Once McCain and uh, uh, Lindsey Graham approved of the nomination of Tillerson, it was a done deal. And I don't think Rubio wanted to be kind of a lone holdout. Uh, you know, they both, everyone, the hardliners said they're not totally convinced, but they are not going to um, veto a presidential appointment, especially one of this stature. But on the Schumer issue, I mean, it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful relationship. I have a question. What was he doing at the inaugural stage? And what was his speech about? Uh, it's the one thing I haven't seen covered. It was one of the oddest events ever. And it was long. It was long, and his speech... Was it long? Yeah, it was long. His speech went nowhere. I mean, now when we know about Captain uh, Ballou or General Ballou, whoever it was, but it seemed slightly out of the place, and it was never actually explained. But that's an aside. Look, Trump had a great day today, starting with the fact that it wasn't Saturday. But it was very organized, very disciplined, uh, and I think that scene of him with the union leaders was a great act of political larceny. That is a Democratic constituency. That's the constituency he stole to get elected to the presidency. And as long as he nurtures it, He's got a he's got a leg up on the Democrats. Look for more of that for twenty yeah. for, for until twenty twenty. More outreach yeah. like that, but we shouldn't overlook that Mexico City policy. Uh, Tom Cotton said reaffirming this policy will usher in a new era of concern for the unborn. Not one dime of taxpayer money should pay for abortion, and I think this decision will go a long way towards spreading a culture of life both in this country and around the world. That's a big deal mm -hmm. for social conservatives. Uh, uh, absolutely, and Sean Spicer reaffirmed that today in the press conference. He was asked directly about. That and he said we're standing up, you know, essentially paraphrasing for the most vulnerable, uh, the people who are, uh, you know, basically unborn and born. Uh, all Americans uh, deserve our protection. And I think there are, you know, think think back to the primary. All these social conservatives were really concerned about Trump. 
what kind of judges he's going to nominate. He does, he's not really pro-life. He's going to do this, he's going to do that. He's just a liberal in disguise. And this is done on day one. That's pretty good so Any far. Any Republican president would have done this on day one, as they have in the past. However, what, what happened is presidents who change their parties don't completely blow up the old coalition and replace it with something new. They bridge the old base of the party, like social conservatives, and they bring in new people, like the labor union. So that's what you saw today. He wasn't, he wasn't breaking faith with the old base of the Republican Party. On the contrary, he was making good on well, all his promises been, to yeah. them. Well, that is after, the Republican yeah, Party. Yeah, after yeah. Saturday, don't you think today was was coming yeah, for a I lot of yeah. his party. No question. All right. The